the ultimate mission. There are life-changing life messages in our text. The ones that I will explore to you for you today are not the only ones, but they're among three or four that I want to highlight that God gave me uh, as I was studying this. And it, it occurred to me as I was preparing this message that I could, um, Sister McCoy, I could preach from this same text next Sunday and preach this same message uh, from this same text with a totally different message because there's so much going on here. There's so many things. There's so uh, many um, uh, plots and subplots. And as I always say, the word of God is inexhaustible. Men have been preaching from the Bible ever since the Bible has been put together. And men have not exhausted, mankind have not exhausted this book. Now we come in our text to the conclusion, the climactic conclusion of these attacks on our Lord. There may have been more, but the text deals with these three, these three were, uh, I call them the big three, and they became more complex. Uh, turns out they became more complex and more difficult. The severity of the temptations increased as the time of trial was coming to an end. You have to remember that uh, when Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit, according to verse 1, to be tempted of the devil, the Bible doesn't say that he was led there to be tempted of the devil for 40 days. We're not told how long he was going to be there. The Holy Spirit didn't tell Jesus how long, when he led him. Initially now, we know through dramatic irony, having read the story, that in the 40th day, after having fasted 40 days and 40 nights, here comes the devil. But when Jesus was initially led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, the Holy Spirit did not tell him if you can last 40 days and 40 nights, you can make it. No, he was just led. You don't know how long your trial will last. But learn to gauge when the trial is coming to a conclusion. And one of the signs that you're winning and it's, and it's about to come to a conclusion is as the escalation, the severity, the worse the devil makes it because Satan knows that if you, that, that the time is almost up. I, I think that it was Abraham uh, Lincoln. It may have been Lincoln. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that. But I think he said that one of the reasons that most people fail is that they quit one day too soon. We give up. We, we walk away. We, we tend to uh, get out the oven just a few minutes before the cake is baked. And um, um, it's something to be said for learning how to just wait on the Lord. So our Lord here was led into the wilderness to be tempted of uh, the devil. And the text tells us in verse 2 that after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Let me unpack that a little bit. The fasting that he was on. Notice he was led to be tempted, but he fasted during that time. The reason our Lord, that the fast was not the temptation. The fast was our Lord spending the time getting the instructions from the Father as to how to carry out his assignment. You see, Jesus was 100% God 
but he was also 100% man. And God had just said to Jesus, uh, as John baptized him in the wilderness, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Well, the father had given to Jesus an august assignment. The assignment was for him to become, he was born to be the propitiation. He was born to be the Lamb of God. He was born to take away the sins of the world. He was born to, to establish a legitimate pathway. Uh, a legitimate uh, to remove all the hindrances between God and man. And so for 40 days and 40 nights, he sought the Father. He fasted, he prayed. The Hebrew writer said that Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. That is, Jesus being born in the earth. Again, 100% God, but 100% man. He learned the human experience through the things that he suffered. And so getting his instructions from the Father at the conclusion of the 40 days and 40 nights of fasting and praying in this uh, bleak place, we've talked about it, between Jordan and Jerusalem, there was a 30 mile span. Within that 30 miles, there was an ugly place called the wilderness with jagged rocks, no vegetation. It's very hot and dry place. And in this uh, 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 instance in our Lord's life, at this point in our Lord's ministerial career, he had not called any of the disciples. It was just Jesus. No Peter, no James, no John, no 12, no three, just him. And uh, left there alone to get instructions from the Father. And here comes the devil. And Satan tempted him. The first temptation offered to satis was an offer to satisfy the desires of his flesh to eat by turning stones into bread. We talked about that. The second temptation offered protection in jumping from the temple. It was Satan's way to make Jesus look more like a wonder worker a sideshow, a carnival, uh, a freak of nature, jump, some say 450 feet down, other writers said that the whole drop would have been 700 feet. You will jump from this pinnacle, the highest point in the temple. You will land, Satan says, and the Father has given his angels charge over you to protect you unless you dash your foot against a stone. And when you land unharmed, people will follow you because you are a miracle worker. And because you are the new flavor of the month, you're the new star. Satan wanted people to see Jesus as everything and anything except the Savior of the world. And this is why when the Lord healed people, he would tell them, tell no man. Because I don't want them to follow me because I'm able to heal them. I don't want you to follow me because I gave you water from the rock. I don't want you to follow me because I can give you a big house. Satan gives big houses. I don't want you to follow me because I can give you a fine car to ride around in. Satan gives fine cars. There's a, uh, a thing out on the internet. It, it is said to have been fake. But uh, it, it claims to, or it, it, it uh, purports to show uh, the rapper. Well, since they say it's fake, I won't even call his name, but he was talking about how he served Satan and the Christians are fooled. And how do you think I got all of this that I have? Satan gave it to me. And these, uh, how do you think I've gotten my millions and my billions? Satan did it. And these Christians are fooled. They're, serving Jesus and their suffering and I got all my stuff and Satan gave it to me and as I watched it I, <laughs> I kind of chuckled as the evangelist because I said uh, he's partly right I wasn't, I wasn't startled he's partly, he's partly right 
if 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 all you want out of the world is millions or billions or houses and land and cars and all that and material things, if that's if that's just what you want, if that's just what you're after, if that's the only thing that floats your boat. Satan can give you all that. If you want fame, notoriety, and all that. Now I hadn't mentioned happiness, joy, peace, contentment, and all that yet. But if you if if, if you just want to be famous. If you just want to get in the movies, if that's what you want, if, if you want, if you want uh, all that this world has to offer, oh man, Lucifer is your guy. But if you want joy, contentment with blessings, you want an eternal home in heaven. You want to shun hell. If you want to discover what life is truly all about and live a life that is truly meaningful and worthwhile, you better run from Lucifer and from anything that he offers because he can't help you in those things for he has nothing like that to give. Amen. Don't be fooled. Satan's third temptation, which was the most uh, difficult one, was that he offered Jesus power and prestige. He offered him the world. God Almighty. The temptation offered Christ a high position with power, prestige to be on top in the world. And the reason I call this one the most uh, difficult of the three because the offer was greater. And all three had Christ failed any of them, it would have disqualified him from being the savior of the world, and we'd all be lost. We'd all be on our way to hell. Pardon me, we'd be trying to kill each other. There'd be no uh, goodness in the earth. Could you imagine living here without the influence of Christ? It'd be a very, very wicked place to live. So he made this offer, or he seemed to, and we'll talk about it later, and notice in our text today, I told you there's so many things to preach about here, how Satan uses something as simple as height. Everybody say height. Verse 5 says um, of our text, then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Verse 8 says, and the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. Why this? Why the emphasis on height? Satan's a master at appealing to our base nature. All human beings want to move up. At our core, everybody wants to be, very few people today, let me rephrase it, are satisfied where they are. Praise the Lord. Everybody wants want to move up. People want to progress. People Everybody want to be promoted. No phrase has ever caught on in the body of Christ, at least what he's doing my lifetime, like the phrase, move to the next level. I mean, you, there are volumes on next level. Next level. This appeals to our fallen human nature like nothing else. 
next. And next literally always means more. Because in our minds, next never means death. Next never means demotion. See, we only believe that it's God. I, I, I love sports. I love, I, I'm always pleased when the athletes acknowledge Christ when they win. I, I just would love to see them acknowledge him when they lose. It's, 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 not, only, it's not Jesus only when you win the game. In fact, we, our character develops more from when we lose and when we win. But, you know, we just, we, they give all kinds of signs when they score a touchdown and point at him and all that stuff. And then when uh, uh, they fumble or the referee get a bad call, that same player may be saying, F you. It's amazing to me that it's only God when we're getting what we want. He's only to be praised when he comes through the way we want him to. We fail to realize, uh, we fail to appreciate, though, that sometimes what we want is not what is best. Sometimes God is not saying no, but sometimes God is simply saying not now. When he told Paul not to go into Asia, Paul didn't go. It's a good thing he didn't. He was gotten killed. Later in his ministry, the Lord said, go to Asia. And he went. Sometimes. See, the, the Heavenly Father is in charge. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Promotion in and of itself is a good thing. Are you listening to me? The Bible says... For promotion cometh not from the east, nor the west, nor the south. But God is the judge. He putteth down one and setteth up another. Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7. The apostle Paul also said this. If this is a true saying, if any man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. But when it comes to these things, our Lord said this. In Luke 12 and 15, he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possess. That is, your life is not held together by the abundance of possessions. You cannot become so materially minded, so promotion minded, so next level minded that you allow yourself to be defined even the only way, the way that you even uh, see yourself is whether or not you are moving up at a particular time. When you fall to that trap, you fall into the devil's hand. The Hebrew writer said this, let your conversation be without covetousness. What is covetousness? What is it when we covet? To covet is to constantly want that which belongs to someone else. To covet is to be in a constant state of wanting. Covetous people are never satisfied. As a matter of fact, we, we praise covetous people now. And we call them, notice how the world twists things. We call them, well, these are driven people. And they're never satisfied. And they're just driven. And you study their lives. And many times they're driven. Uh, three failed marriages. Driven. Kids got in all kinds of trouble because dad was Driven. Oh, yeah, had the best career and got it all done. But you got it at the expense of your home, your children, your relationships, your parents, because you were driven. Out of control zeal, uncontrolled desires will destroy you. Covetousness. Let not your life 
Let your conversation, let your lifestyle be without covetousness and be content. We don't even preach this anymore. Be content with such things as you have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You all are not saying amen now. Do you not know that this particular tendency, this particular sin is what destroyed Lucifer? The word Lucifer literally means bright star or star of the morning. Lucifer was an angel in God's kingdom, an angel to whom God had given to certain angels free will, the ability to think, the ability to reason. And we find Lucifer, and Lucifer walked up and down in the mountains of God. Lucifer had access to the throne of God. Lucifer was called the anointed uh, uh, cherub that covereth. The only people in God's kingdom who had more power than Lucifer at the time was the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. For God to have elevated him to such a manner, to such a state, you would think that he would have been happy as a lot. You would have think that he would have said thank you and been content. But no, Isaiah the prophet tells the sad story. The Bible says in Isaiah 14 and 12, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, Son of the morning, how art thou cut down? How did you get cut down? Not just down, but down to the ground. What brought you down, Lucifer, which didst weaken nations? Here's what brought you down. For thou hast said, and you didn't talk to many people about it. In fact, here we find that he only talked to himself. Thou hast said in thine heart. God reads our minds. And he knows our innermost thoughts. Say, so, well, you don't know I was shared with anybody. Well, you don't have to share it with the Lord. You can't keep it from him. Thou hast said in thine heart. Notice this. Notice even here the use of height. I will ascend. Not I will humble myself. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation. I'm not going to just sit in the congregation. I'm going to sit on the mount. I got to be at I got to be on the top of the assembly. Can't just sit in the audience. <laughs> in the sides of the north. Look at this. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Are you following me? And I will be like the most high. Everybody looks at the ranking officer. You got to watch that. And secretly lust in their heart. That's the seat I want. That should be me. I should be the one preaching. That's the place that God has for me. Pasheka, I hear the Holy Ghost. They say. Most men, when they come out the presence of the Lord, they're humble. When, Abraham, when, when Isaiah came out of the presence of the Lord, he, he said, woe is me. For I am undone. You can tell when you've been with Jesus. It humbles you. And you don't have to plot and plan and, and uh, uh, let me set this up and set that up. No, 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 no. When the Lord gets ready to elevate you, when God gets ready, there, there, there's no ugliness in the plan. There's no chicanery. There's no double dealing. Praise the Lord. I'm preaching good. There's no, you don't have to be a, a manipulative person. You don't have to try to outwit anybody. When God gets ready. So you, you, you like me better today when I didn't have a voice, but I feel it. Height. 
I'm not saying that you shouldn't thrive, but you have to control that. A many marriages, a many homes, a many relationships, a many families have been destroyed for that one thing. Everybody feels that they're, that they're beneath where they should be. Check that. Everybody feels that they should be above where they are. Check that feeling. I thought you put your life in the hands of the Lord. I thought you made God your manager. I thought the Lord was your agent. Well, if the Lord's your manager, the Lord's your agent, God knows how to put you on people's heart. God knows how to make folk think about you. Somebody I met a long time ago called me from California the other day. Said, Bishop, this is so-and-so from California. Uh, we, we talked at a certain time. Uh, uh, man, look, I thought he forgot me because I sure forgot him. But God knows when to bring things to where they should be. Ezekiel, I'm going to preach in just a minute. Ezekiel said this about the devil. Thine heart was lifted up. There it is again. Because of thy beauty. Put that hand mirror down. Don't let your beauty go to your head. Amen. Ah, uh, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. See, you know what got him? His intelligence. Sometimes wisdom is the enemy to loyalty. Sometimes being bright makes you overthink. Sometimes it takes you into places where you shouldn't go. Some of us are too intelligent to simply wait on the law. That makes no sense to us. I'm preaching. Makes no sense. No, 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 no. I can't do that. I hear what you're saying. I, but I got to. All right. That's what he said. It was his brightness. It was his good looks. Those things gave him a sense of entitlement. And look what he ended up. I, I, I will cast thee to the ground. And I will lay thee before kings. And they shall behold thee. Ambition, my brothers and sisters, is a wonderful thing. I am an ambitious man. But ambition uncontrolled makes you a monster. Ambition uncontrolled will make you a Jacob. Praise the Lord. Where Jacob means supplanter. A supplanter is someone who gets ahead by stabbing other people in the back. Ambition uncontrolled makes you someone who's not worthy to be trusted. Ambition uncontrolled will make you leave home chasing what you already had. Only to find out you, were, you would have been better off had you stayed put. Why do you think the Bible tells us so much to wait on the Lord? You know why? It's hard to wait on the Lord. When you wait on the Lord, you got to talk, you got to talk to yourself. Our, our own minds war against waiting on the Lord. You know why? Because it takes God too long. God is slow. I've been waiting, preacher. Nothing has happened. Well, wait some more. It's, it's no fun in waiting on the Lord. But if you wait on the Lord and be of good courage, he will strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Ah, I feel something. Um. Don't lose your ambition. Control it. First lesson, and I'm almost where I'm headed, know your mission. For those who are taking notes, second lesson is remain focused on your mission. And lastly, the third is fulfill your mission. Know your mission. Jesus came to save the world. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. 
for he shall save his people from their sins. He didn't come to be president. He didn't come to be king at this time. He didn't come to be governor. He didn't come to make men rich. Do you know that there were poor people who were poor when Jesus started his earthly ministry? And they were poor when Jesus went to the cross. And they remain poor when Jesus rose again the third day. And they were left poor when he ascended. The Bible says, though, that, he, that they didn't get overlooked. He said, and the poor had the gospel preached unto them. See, in this day and time, they were, people will make you think that unless the Lord makes you rich, you're not blessed. That God hadn't visited you yet. They'll, they'll walk up to you and tell you, your day is coming. Well, if you know the Lord, your day has come. Jesus, hallelujah, you're living your day. He'll take you. He'll make you. Just trust him. Jesus knew his mission. He knew that he came to save. But now here's the thing. Are you with me? Am I doing all right? You know, I, don't, I, don't have, I, don't have, I don't have the punch today. But here, here's what you got to get. When Jesus came to save, now he'd been fasting, fasting 40 days, right? Talking to the Father about his assignment. He came to save, but now here's the kicker. Here's the rub. Here's the rub. Come to save. But the way I want you to do it, said God the Father is a bloody way, a painful way. You have to die to do it. You got to die. You, you can't sin, and you got to die. In order to do this, here's your mission. Mission is to do it. All right? In order to do it now, you're going to have to suffer humiliation. A grown man hanging on the cross naked in front of his mother and people. You will have to be forsaken by your closest comrades. You will be spit upon. Yeah. They will... Men will blindfold you and slap you and say, prophesy, and guess which one of us hit you. Your eyes will be swollen. Your head will have to will swell twice its size because they're going to put a, a crown of thorns on your head, and the thorns are about three inches each, and they will, they will dig into the most sensitive skin on the human body, which is the scalp. You will stench of spittle from soldiers. And you'll look around for your comrades and you'll find that they've all forsaken you. And, uh, and uh, when you look for me, you won't be able to find me either. And you'll ask, it's already written in the volume of the book, you'll ask, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I have a mission, but the mission includes pain. In case y'all wonder what this is, pineapple juice. <laughs> Amen. It includes pain. It includes suffering. So, what's the point of this? Uh, and in doing this now, you're going to get the kingdoms of the world. Because remember now, I said that Satan offered Jesus the kingdoms of the world. But then I threw some in, seemingly. But if you read uh, sometimes Psalms chapter 2 and verse 8, we find out that the Father is going to give him the kingdom of the world anyway. <laughs> Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for an inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. <laughs> it's already his anyway. 
But you know what Satan offered? You know what Satan offered? You know what Satan offered? He offered something that we often fall prey to. Help us, Lord. He offered him a shortcut. He offered Jesus an alternate route. He says to the Lord, look at the world and the kingdoms of the world. All of this will I give you if you not go to no cross, get cut, beat up, spit on, and go through all that stuff. The devil said to Jesus, it don't take all. No, no, no. You ain't got to do all that. Matter of fact, I'll give it to you and it will be painless. All you got to do is fall down and worship me. No cuts, no hammer, no nail, no cross. None of that. No spear in the side. None of that stuff. No, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? None of that stuff. None, none, none of that. None. No, 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 no. And oh, look at what's going on in the church world today. Look at what we're doing. We're taking all of the shortcuts. Pastor told me the other day that he lost some members from his church because you know what the members said? Well, we don't like to dress up and come to church anymore. That's too inconvenient. We want to go where we can be leisure. All the, t all shortcuts. Pray, praise the Lord. The service lasts too long. We need to go where we're in and out in 30 minutes. Shortcuts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I don't like upper room because you know over there, you know, that preacher going to talk about them homosexuals. He's going to preach against lesbianism. He's going to preach against abortion. He's going to preach against all this stuff. And, and we like being over here where you don't have to hear that stuff. Shortcuts. And, and you know what? Over here we can still be saved. You, you can be saved at our church and go to the Beyonce concert when Beyonce come to town. You can be saved with us and drink when you want to. Shortcuts. You can be saved over here and fornicate. The, the guy and his girlfriend attend the service. They are dating and they sit in service all locked up with their arms around each other like that. The move is in church. With flip flops on and short pants coming before the King of Kings. Shortcuts. We don't want our youth to learn the Bible. We want our youth doing youth church to play baseball, basketball, football. Let them run around and be kids. Shortcuts. Our, our salvation doesn't affect our voting record. Shortcuts. We compete today, we holiness churches. We contend with the churches who offer an alternate route. A cheaper way to heaven. But I'm here to tell you, there are no shortcuts. Some of us are always trying to get around the rules. Makes me sick, always trying. To alleviate. Well, I know we're supposed to go, but I feel like if I can just shortcut, that's the devil. That's the devil. Always a more convenient way. I know the others, I know the others had to struggle. I know Mother Turner had to call on the Lord before the Lord filled her with the Holy Ghost. But I just confessed I'm filled. And you walked on, but you know what? Yours don't keep you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't join uh, the holiness church because if you come to holiness, you got to stop smoking. You got to stop drinking. You got to come out. You got to leave the frats. You got to leave them fraternities. And uh, the, 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 he gonna call you out of the Muslims, out of the Masons. He's going to call you out. But you can come over here and do all that stuff. It's a shortcut. Don't get me started. He 
shortcuts. You're looking for, looking for a way around it. Winners don't look for shortcuts. The best athletes get the practice early and stay late. You tell the best ones, tell the best ones, they play hurt, they play banged up, they play, they perform, they put, they, because they understand that there's no shortcuts to success. That if you're going to truly succeed, if you're going to be somebody, that it's going to cost you something. Satan comes to Jesus and says to Jesus, you don't have to die on no cross. To get this, you don't have to preach, wouldn't you? You don't have to be cut and blooded to get this. Bow down and worship me. Some of you, would, 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 if, it, if, if choice comes down to serving Jesus and being anointed, Presenting yourself in a manner where everybody won't be lusting after you while you're preaching or ministering, whatever it is you're doing, or your insistence on everything being skin tight. You choose that and go to the church where you can look like a, a hoe or a pimp and serve. You would rather choose that than to be inconvenienced in the least little way. Satan said to Jesus, I have a path that is devoid of inconveniences. I have a path that is quick, fast, and in a hurry. Bow down. Fall down and worship me. And when you get back up, when you get back up, when you get up, when you get up, when you get up, hey, hey, it's yours. Jesus, huh? Looked at it. I wish I had a voice. Hey, you know what? Maybe, maybe the Lord don't want me to pull the train on this one. Because you need to hear this. See? Yeah, amen. Amen. Um, Jesus looked at him and, and, and gave a response. Because, see, Jesus went right back to the word. See, when Satan tried to use the word out of context, he failed. First time Satan didn't use the word at all. Notice this. First time Satan didn't use the word at all says, turn stones into bread. That didn't work. Second time, Satan tried to use the word for it is written. He should give his angels charge over you to keep you lest you dash your feet, uh, thy foot against the stone. That didn't work. So now Satan goes from the word and just use a material approach. Uh, the offer of, of, of politics and power and power and power. Everybody wants power. Everybody loves power, power, the thirst for power, for prestige. Everybody want to move up. Power says, okay, now maybe you'll do it for power. Jesus goes back to the word. He quotes Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. Thou shall worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. That was my point. Yes, I know that the voice, American Idol, and all these shows can give you a contract. Yes, we know that they can get put you on a stage that a church may not be able to put you on. Yes, we know that they can make you famous. But it comes at the expense of serving the Lord thy God and him only shall thy serve. You know, I got, I got an interesting offer one year. This was long before they started doing the Preachers of L.A. and all the TV, you know, the showing the preachers on television. Well, it's, it's so funny. It's so funny. Well, I can tell you, we had, we, we was doing something. And a TV, a music producer downtown was listening at some samples. And something came up with my broken voice on it. And nothing caught the man's ear. All these good voices. But mine, me. And the man said, who is that? And the guy said, well, that's Pastor Wood. 
man said, tell him to call me. We can use his voice. This is this way for preachers of L.A. Uh, and, and, and any of the rest of them. The man was way ahead of that. And said, we can use his voice for jingles and radio spots. And he don't have to tell nobody who it is, but, but we can make money. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. This voice, with all of its problems, is dedicated to the gospel. Hallelujah. 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 I've been, to, I've, the man made me an offer that guys who I think can sing hadn't been told. Told me. And in my flesh, you know, I said, wow, that'll show them. I'm, I don't know what I'm going to say. Western tastes good like a cigarette. I don't know. <laughs> but no, 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 no. That's a setup. You have to watch it. See, Satan is a master manipulator. He knows the psychology of a human being. He'll come after you in the way where you really want to get paid back because people have treated you like you're nothing or you felt uh, rejected or people have. So now he comes with an offer to show them. But you're showing them at the expense of the Lord. Say amen. So he says, no, no, no. Now let me, let me speed it. I got to close. The next one is remain focused on your mission because Satan will distort and pervert things. Now, Jesus' mission, remember now, is to die for us, right? Watch this one. <clears throat> and I won't complete this. I won't exhaust this today, but I'm going to move fast. Notice what Satan does. Satan shows Jesus the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. That is a distorted view right. of the kingdoms of the world. That's right. That is a perverted That's view right. of the kingdoms of the world. Because the truth is, kingdoms have more guile than they have glory. Kingdoms have bad sides of time. Kingdoms have sewers. Kingdoms have crime. Kingdoms have red light districts. Kingdoms have problems. Kingdoms have black on black crime, black on white crime, white on black crime. Kingdom have abortion clinics. Kingdoms have clubs. Kingdom have homosexual bars. Kingdoms have hospitals. Hospitals have morgues. All the hospitals, when they run their commercials, none of them show you the morgue. You ain't bring that up. At the business park. Ain't nobody down there talking, but it's, it's hey, hey, hey. yes, Lord, somebody's always down there. They don't bring it up. They don't bring it up. They don't bring it up. Satan showed Jesus a distorted, perverted view of the world. He made the world look like what it was not. He tried to make it look like it really didn't need saving. Look at these beautiful buildings. Look at this beautiful landscape. Look at all these nice things. You go down across for this? What? It's beautiful. Yeah. That's what Satan does to us. He shows us one side of a thing. He shows us the pleasure but he don't show the price. He shows the splendor of evil, but not the pain 
that that evil causes. He shows the liquor. But he didn't, he didn't show the destruction that comes from being an alcoholic. A drunk man will rape his son or his daughter, cheat on his wife, beat up the family. Ah, bring instability to the home, cuss the family out, do all kinds of things. But he didn't know that that was behind that cool picture of a man in a magazine holding a drink. They thirst, they thirsty, my friend. There's a whole lot that they're not showing you when they tell you to stay thirsty. Can I get a witness? Yes, he makes cigarettes look cool. Mm -hmm. But it didn't show you, praise the Lord, what happens years later. Your inner organs are messed up. Gums receded. Teeth messed up. Praise the Lord. Can't breathe. Laboring to breathe. Skin aged prematurely. All kinds of things. But what he showed you was a cool guy or a cool girl riding on the back of a motorcycle with a cigarette in the hand. What does one have to do with the other? He knows how to show you the splendor without showing you the pain. Ah, can I get a witness? Uh -huh. He knows how to change our focus. Make us look at what is not there. The promiscuity, God knows. Say he knows how to make it look good. His shoulders were broad and her back was big. And it looked like you couldn't live without her. You couldn't live without him. Showed you all that stuff. And you went after her or you went after him. But you didn't see that disease you were going to land on. You didn't see that unwanted pregnancy. You didn't see the failed marriage. You didn't see the pain on the other side. He perverts the view. He doesn't let you see what's that. You, you don't see your career being destroyed. You don't see it. Because what he shows you. It's one side of a thing. He's wonderful. I got to have him. That's what you saw. You saw wonderful. You saw good looking. Here's what he didn't show you. He didn't show you that his name was Jeffrey. Jeffrey what? Dama? Yeah, he was looking at you all right. You the meal. So you said, now, nah, ain't nobody ever looked at me like that before. I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> you a dinner. You about like Isaac. I see the wood and I see the... <laughs> where's the meat? <laughs> oh, you the meat. That's the way Satan is. Oh, he'll talk you out of leaving the church. Oh, you did. he'll talk you out of your church. This church. The folk ain't right. And all that kind of stuff. Till you're gone. Till you're gone, till you, you, till you're gone. A particular missionary, oh, she worked hard to get her license. Worked hard, worked hard, worked. Finally got him, and, and before we could even send him to listen to the wrong person, talk to, out of, into leaving the church, left the church, and just oh, had bad things to say about us too. And was over across uh, town in another city. So you can't figure out who it is. And uh, another city. And, and, and ended up with people who sold the thing and left. Left them there high and dry. Pride wouldn't let her come back. She saw one side of a thing. Now go on home and hug that, that man. Go home and love that woman. The devil, while he's trying to pull you out, is showing you one side. One side. One side. One side. But that individual is perfect. Everybody's got 10 
positive traits and 10 negative. You just hadn't seen the negatives. Particular, particular actress, you've been divorced two or three times. She's pretty as she can be. The question was asked, how in the world could men leave such a beautiful woman? My answer was, ask them. They'll tell you. Every one of them. They'll tell you what happened. And when they finish, you won't see it the same way. Satan shows you. I'm preaching good. I'm not, I'm not preaching loud. But I'm preaching good. When the devil showed Jesus this, guys, well, I'm just bi curious. I, I'm, I'm thinking about getting with a man. The devil will show you on TV. You can't hardly watch TV now. You can't hardly watch television. The devil will show you all of these homosexuals. They all look so healthy. And they all look so clean, and they all, they're all so intelligent on that Prudential commercial, and they talk about how people are going to live a long time. They let the sisters talk. The, 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 the couple, they ain't going to make it. Do all the talking. And uh, that's, that's, to, that's to sell you an idea. He'll show you that, but he won't show you the ravishes of that lifestyle. He distorts things. Satan didn't show Jesus the hood. He didn't show him the ghetto. He showed him the glory. All you saw that night was the sex. Satan didn't show you the child support. That's good preaching, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's good preaching. Yes, sir. That's the way the devil does. That's the way the devil does. He'll show you robbing that person, but he won't let you see the police catching you. He won't let you, won't, won't let you see which, what the new world you're in for now. That's why you, you have to turn him down. Young black brother who wants to be a thug. Come on, man. You ain't thug material. Turn that down. Come on, turn that down. Turn that down. Take advantages of all the opportunities you got in this country. Turn that down. Turn that down. Well, a black man can't get nowhere in this country. Well, a brown man can. The Hispanics believe they can. That's why they do everything they can to get in here. The left and liberalism and leftists Democrat policies have messed us up. Got black folk mad with the country. Black folk believing that if you're a black man, you can't get ahead. Whereas, contrary to that belief, there are the brown Hispanics fighting to get in, constantly gaining ground, replacing us in the job market, moving in our stead while we stand around believing somebody, letting them make us mad so we will stand on the sidelines and give up all of our opportunities. Well, we're dumb enough to fall for it. Fastest growing entrepreneurial segment in the country are Hispanic women. They're exploding with businesses. Exploding. While we're somewhere mad at Trump. There is something wrong with us. You know what I wish we understood? I wish we understood that those who are for open borders, that is a political fancy way of saying we are for replacing black folk. Well, well, well. I wish you understood that. And, and I'm going to tell you who's for it. The, 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 the corporations and business owners, that group of Republicans and Democrats, Democrats want Hispanics because Hispanics give birth to their children 
They want votes. Get them in, get them hooked on the government's titty, and they will become Democrats. Corporations want them because they are cheaper labor. Well, ain't nobody fighting for us seemingly, but people like me who will tell the truth, they see us as a liability. Get rid of the black man. Keep them aborting their babies. Keep them killing their own. Black on black crime has spiked in uh, uh, Baltimore, Maryland. It has spiked in uh, Ferguson, Missouri. It has spiked in Chicago. We're killing each other. And the world is saying, let them kill each other because we're replacing them with brown people because they are cheaper uh, labor and they are greater in numbers because we abort more of our babies than we give birth to. I wish we understood this. I wish, I wish that we did. I see some of your faces now. You got a funny look on your face. I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. Call me, have a meeting. Sit down man on man and make your case. I guarantee you when I finish, you'll end up saying the same thing that I'm saying, because I got facts on my side. Our people deserve better. We help build this country. And God knows everybody else shouldn't benefit and we get wiped out and get replaced. I'm not for the black man being replaced. I'm for the brother taking his place. You didn't know I could do that, did you? All right. Last one. Jesus then, when that beautiful world was put before him, here's a lesson, guys and ladies. You know what he did? That's when he said, get the hints. See, uh, you can't stare at what you like too long. You can't keep what Satan uses to tempt you before your eyes too long. Now you got to go home and throw away all that Playboy, all that pornography. Well, I just hold on to one in the closet, throw that stuff away. You can't do that. You can't, you can't put yourself in harm's way because the way the human mind works, your resistance over time continually lessens. So you know what Jesus did? He said, get out of here, Satan. Get behind me. Because he looked at the glory of the world and you know what, ma'am? They look good. Well, maybe I don't need to die for them. Shucks. Everybody's doing good to me. Uh-uh. He may look like an angel, but she's not. He may look like a godsend, but he's not. I can't get it. I can't get it, man. That drug may look enticing, but it's, de it's designed to destroy you. The, the social drink may be cool. All alcoholics were social drinkers. Everybody started out a social drinker. Everybody started out being cool at the party. The guy who's on the street, homeless and drunk, who you drove past on your way to church at one time. He wasn't born like that. At one time, he was just as cool as you. Nice haircut, shave, everything. Smelling good. Ladies, man. It's the way it starts. So you can't keep it before you. That's why you have to cut some of your buddies out. All your buddies drink. Let them go. Amen. All your girlfriends are fornicating and you're trying to live holy. You got to cut ties. Amen. Can't
can't hang with them. Mm. So he told him, get behind me. Lastly, and I'm closing the Bible here, almost, he said, <laughs> he said, he said, the last one is to fulfill your mission. Jesus stayed on point. He said, no, no, I'm here to save the world. I won't let you redefine my job and my assignment and my calling. You don't outrank me, Satan. I'm the son of God. He sent me here on a mission. My mission is to save the world or to make salvation available to everyone. I have to see this through. I don't know how long I got to stay hungry. I don't know how long I got to stay on this fast. But here's what I know. I got to do what I was given to do. For in the volume of the book, it was written of me to come and do this. And I can't give in. So he rebuked him. He said, get away from here, Satan. Leave me. It is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Leave me. And you know what? The Bible says in verse 11, then the devil leaveth him. And when Satan left, there stood our Lord, hungry, tired, thirsty, and alone. Other than the Holy Spirit. And then God sent angels. Angels came. You know what they came with? Food. Water. Sustenance. Other words, you finished. You did this. Now, let me give you a reward. Let me restore you so that you can go out now and in the next three years, really get it done. Know your mission. Stay focused on your mission. Fulfill your mission. Hallelujah. I want to pray for every believer who says to themselves today, Preacher, today the word found me. Hallelujah. You gave multiple examples. I don't need to know which one. But if you're here, come to the altar fast. Hallelujah.